Hey guys, Brad the Builder here. I brought the Church Lady School Bus, the conversion you've been asking about. So today I'm gonna give you a tour of the bus on how we took it from a 14 passenger to a luxury RV, so stay tuned. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a little backstory on the bus. My son got out of the, uh, the Navy and he wanted to just cruise around the country. So he found this bus and wanted to just take all the seats out, put in beanbag chairs, a sleeping bag and be on the road. And I said, ah, being Brad the Builder and uh, some of the skill sets we have, I said, let me have a shot at this thing. So I'll show you around on some of the stuff that we've done. First of all, on the outside, we need some ideas from you guys on what we should do for the color of this bus. Instead of repainting the whole thing, I thought maybe we'd do some decals in between here to get rid of the uh, church bus stickers. But on the outside, what's amazing, these buses, there's so much room underneath that nobody knows about. We were able to install a 5,500 kilowatt generator. So when we pull into campsites, you have this plug right here, you'll plug in. If you're not on a campsite, the generator powers everything inside. So we open this all up, put a little door that hides everything. There's our exhaust pipe. I'll walk you around the other side and I'll show you where we put the propane tank. As you can see, the bus really kind of stays the same. The big mirror stayed on. You can see here, here's where the old school bus stop sign was, but it's been bolted shut. So that's not available anymore, thank goodness. But here we added another door and underneath this is where we put a huge 45 gallon propane tank. So that will power the fuel source for the generator. It will also run the heater in the event you need heat in the winter time. Plus the bus has its own heat too. So two different heat sources, and we also have two air conditioning sources. The one that came with the, the bus, and then we put one when I get inside a whole air conditioning unit in the ceiling, which was the exit hatch for the, for the bus. So one more thing we did on the back of the bus, we were gonna try to put a deck on the back. That's, we're gonna do that later, but we did put a hitch so that we can pull a trailer, maybe a mother-in-law suite. So if uh, Nate decides to take his uh, mother-in-law down the road, his future one, he's not married, he'll be able to put her in her own little camper and tow her behind. So let's go take a look inside. Okay guys, so as I come in here, as you can see, the front of the bus really hasn't changed at all. Everything's the same, except we added this fancy little cushion on the seat because the seat did not match the rest of the stuff. We do have um, all the buttons on the bus, which I kind of think is fun. So when you come to a train crossing, you can hit the buttons, lights will flash. This bus, it's uh, I think it's a 2005, but it only has 55,000 miles on it. People go, that's not very many miles. My answer is, it's a church bus. It was only driven on Sunday, so there you go. I did create a small seat in the front so that a person could literally sit here in front. I even created some seat belts. We're gonna add a cushion on here so a person can sit next to the driver as they're going down the road. That was a requirement my son had. This right here will be a television eventually. It'll be about a 40 inch TV. You'll be able to do your work off this, watch television. As we step into what I call the living room area, remember he wanted this to be beanbag chairs and a folding couch or I don't know what it was. It wasn't much. So I said, luckily your dad's a home builder, designer. Let me have a shot at this. As you come in, we created a transitional area with the couch. We did create a separation because you need storage. This here is a full cabinet. You can put all kinds of stuff back in there included cup holders because these things bounce as you go down the road. So we put this cool pop-up outlet in here that has a USB and plug-ins for your phone and it's a charging station. You can put a lamp here, but also it's nice. It just disappears and goes flat. So that's a nice little touch. We were able to online find RV couches and chairs. And so we measured the bus and found out what's the maximum size we could get in here. So I could show you that this beautiful, it's like a sheepskin rug we put on, this couch will not only seat three to four people, but it lifts out and makes into a bed. Let me show you this. And it just, the key there, it just barely touches. You can't walk through, but then this table in this area, so here we go. We can take this table out, lay it down, and this folds out. When I get this table in here, you put a cushion right here, it makes into another bed. So you could easily sleep four people in here. 
But the best part I think was great is that not only does it sleep four, but it seats nine people and in this small bus. So a 14 passenger bus is now a nine passenger. Oh, by the way, there's storage all underneath that. Tons of storage underneath there. There we go. So storage under there. And then when you go to the other side, because this is so wide open and the couch doesn't hide it, we added more insulation. And then we have an outlet down below. This will be a, uh, a table. And that's one more thing we have to fit in. So the table will sit in here like that. When we're not using the table, we want to turn it into a bed. It sits right down in there. And I'll show you this real quick. Now this turns into uh, it's going to just be a day bed. Now you have a bed here and you still have a single bed or a couch. So two people don't have to share a bed, which works out really nice. So a couple of things we did to keep costs down is we left the ceiling exactly the way it is, but we left this racking system that's up above. Well, it was on both sides of the bus and we found out if we left it on this side, you're always kind of moving, you're gonna hit your head on it. But because this is a seating area, you're gonna be ducking down. And it was real important that we have storage because there's not a lot on these buses. And we thought it'd be nice just to put little trays. You can see it, it's out of the way. As we transition now, now I'm in the kitchen area. We, for storage, we thought was real important. We created this big pantry. It's fairly deep, so you can get a lot of items in there. As you drive down the road, we created a lip on every one of these little crossbars. But I don't know if that's enough. So I'm thinking we're gonna have to put some type of a netting system that goes across that you'd hang down just to keep things from flying off. So lots of storage here, here. And what's interesting is we came up with this idea is a refrigerator freezer that slides out and then it locks in place. It also locks as it goes back in so you can lift it up. You got a freezer, refrigerator. What's nice, you can take it with you. It's not built in. So you have multiple uses for this. Hit that little lever and in it goes. You'll notice down below what's more, another panel we have to provide is that is the heater for the bus when you're plugged into power or the generator is running. It's not running off the engine. So we have the heater down below. And then up here, what was the escape hatch, we put in a brand new air conditioning system. So this bus should do a great job on all climates. And we have also have the windows that are tinted, which will help for privacy and also keep the heat out. So I want to show you how the kitchen functions now. I wanted to point out to you guys to keep costs down. We use a lot of the materials that came off my job site, scrap pieces, because not a lot of tall things are needed on this small bus. This is literally a reclaimed wood that we sanded down, and then we just put several coats of lacquer on it. So that created the countertop for literally nothing. So another thing that we recycled is we demoed a, a house with some ki kitchen cabinets, and we were able to reuse them. And what's nice about it, look at this, the self soft closing hinges, pretty cool. So we were able to reuse all the doors. Okay, so this is just a box frame cabinet. We just put doors and drawers on it. But underneath the very lowest part of this, we have storage in the mid-level, but at the very bottom is a water tank and a storage tank for the uh, gray water. The only water we're using on this bus is the kitchen sink. And here's the faucet that we're gonna be hooking up. We, we, I don't think we're putting in hot water on here. I don't think it was that big of a deal. So we're just gonna have standard cold water. But here's how the kitchen functions with the back to the refrigerator. So to create an L-shaped kitchen, we pop this out. Now I have kind of an L-shaped cooktop kitchen on the back. And then this door is the back of the bus opens up so you could actually work right off the back or have air blowing through. Every single window on the bus works. So this would probably be our ventilation as we're cooking. I do have an outlet up high. And the idea would be is if we wanted to drop down a shelf or mount a microwave in this area, that is something my son at this time doesn't think he needs or wants. So that's fine. We have speakers and down here is an opening is where the original heater for the bus is. So coming down the winter time when you're driving down the road, you have plenty of heat source and it's comfortable, but you also have that rooftop air conditioner. So this is all again, reclaimed wood. Look how pretty this door is. I had one of our wood crafting guys create this out of reclaimed wood. And this goes to the bathroom. So step around here. It's a pretty good sized bathroom. We just did the uh, portable toilet. It has water in it, and, but it's real easy to dump. So I don't have to have a black water tank. So I don't want the hassle with that. That prevents me from cutting holes in the floor. As you can see, we have a pretty good sized bathroom. I'll come in here that a lot of elbow room in a small bus like this, but this is a necessary thing if you need it, but you try to avoid it, but it's here 
as a nice luxury feature. Also, it can probably double as a closet if someone needs. So once again, storage, doubles, bathroom, and then we have this, like I said, our fancy reclaimed wood door on it, going for a little bit of a cottage theme. So this gives you an idea of the stuff that we had to build to create the boxes, if you will, the rooms and the bus. One thing we did from the ground up that we started from zero is tearing out all the seats. And when we did that, we realized we should add some insulation, not only for sound, but also insulation for comfort. In doing so, we had to raise the floors probably about uh, an inch or so. And then we put this LVT floor down. Because I build houses and there's always scrap material, there seemed to be enough from a job that we were able to install all brand new LVT floors for literally uh, just labor, no cost of buying the material. So our goal was to try to build this bus as inexpensively as possible. We uh, did have to spend the money on, on the seats. We felt that was very important because you see that. And they doubled as beds, which was a great win-win. We were able to use a lot of reclaimed wood. You know, We had to buy the refrigerator under here, but what's nice, that's portable. Then we had to buy the generator and we had to also buy, there's an inverter. An inverter is something that your bus runs off batteries when you're uh, not hooked up to power. So I think in the end, I may have spent probably all in, the bus was about $7,500. And then I think I spent about another fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. So I think I'm in for about 20, what would that be, 14? about $21,000, $22,000 in this bus. I did have professional help because I just did not have time to do all the work. So that drove up the costs a little bit. If some of you people are handy enough to do this on your own, you could save quite a bit of money and uh, probably get this done for around $10,000 where I spent uh, probably 14, 15,000. So that's our conversion bus. I'd like some help from you guys to see what we can do to pretty up the outside of this thing. And I would also see if you have some ideas on a name. There's a header on the front of this thing. I'd like to see what we should call it. Hey, also let me know if you'd like to see us take this camping. We have not had this thing out yet. We're just finishing up. If that's something you'd like to see, please comment down below. Thanks for watching. I'm Brad the Builder and I'm off to my next project. You guys thought I forgot the horn.